Dr. Paul Mason, melatonin as an antioxidant and fatty tongue causes sleep apnea. Another interesting line of evidence is melatonin, which is a potent antioxidant. So most people don't realize that that's in the pineal circulation in the brain associated with circadian rhythms. Um, potent antioxidants. So they've got blinded studies where supplementing people with five milligrams or 10 milligrams twice a day reversed fatty liver disease. Yeah, I heard about this. That's fascinating. Do you uh, use that, it? I do. You Absolutely. Do. Um, so, I mean, I think that look, the best thing is to reduce oxidative stress and a couple of drivers of oxidative stress are fluctuating blood sugar levels, cut out the carbs and any, any liquid fats. So oils, um, they basically oxidize. So they, if you can cut both of those out, then fine. You probably don't need it. But some people, you know, for whatever reason, they have lifestyle reasons, they live with families, they've got cultural reasons, they're still going to keep eating crap foods. And those kind of patients, I'll say, well, let's do a bit of risk mitigation here. And, you know, melatonin twice daily is certainly, you know, up there with carnosine for uh, one of the good supplements. Wait, melatonin twice daily, did you just say? Yeah, correct. So, and people are worried, oh, won't it zonk me out in the morning? It doesn't seem to have that effect. Yeah, so, I mean, it's obviously known as a sleep promoter. Um, but, I, and I based my dosing off the science because that was the, uh, that was what the studies that have shown improvements have used. So I think that's my justification. And very rarely will I have anybody tell me that it affects them. And interestingly, the people who tell me it affects them tend to be those guys who I suspect have sleep apnea. So I think that's just daytime somnolence from another cause, right. which actually brings me on to another uh, quasi interesting topic related to visceral fat. So, the cause of sleep apnea, I mean, we used to just think it was the bull neck and all the fat around the airways here. It's actually the tongue. The tongue gets fat. The tongue gets fat. And I was chatting to a, uh, a butcher a while back and he was describing to me um, Wagyu beef. And he's saying, if you have a look at a, a really expensive Wagyu tongue, is saying the marbling, you can see it right through the tongue and compare it to a normal beef tongue and there's absolutely nothing going on there at all. And we've got some MRI studies now where we've actually looked at the size and the fat distribution in people's tongues before and after weight loss. And you can actually see that the space in the airway just clears. So what's actually happening in people with sleep apnea is that when they're falling asleep, the muscles, the tone around the airways that helps keep the airways open, that relaxes a little bit. And if you've basically got this massive lobular tongue in there, then there's no room, a little bit of relaxation and <laughs> your airways occluding. And the big problem is, as you know, people aren't always conscious of the waking. So the airway occludes, they have a deoxygenation in their, their blood. So they get this arousal of their brain that just triggers them, sympathetic activation, just enough to say, oh, you better, you know, tighten up the airway a little bit, we need to get some air through. Um, so it's a partial wakening, but a lot of people aren't actually conscious that they're waking. They might be waking, you know, tens of times every hour. Like they're just never getting into a deep sleep. They just feel absolutely awful. And this sleep deprivation also has impacts and you'll know full well about the impacts that sleep deprivation has on leptin and ghrelin, two hormones essential for energy homeostasis. So you can sort of see that you get this cycle, you get overweight and that leads to other effects that has this feed forward effect that dysregulate these hormones and causes you to gain more weight. And it's very difficult to break this cycle. And I was absolutely fascinated when this study came out and we could actually see the tongue literally shrinking in size. And funnily enough, the, the conclusion of this paper was that perhaps we should be thinking about therapies that shrink the tongue. Maybe we could do cryotherapy and burn the fat and these kind of things. I was like, oh. so they, so you, you demonstrated that you could shrink the tongue with weight loss. And then you demonstrated that that shrinking of the tongue led to massive improvements in sleep apnea. So the conclusion is that let's treat sleep apnea by, you know, maybe surgery or something to shrink the tongue. Melatonin can be a potent antioxidant. The cranial circulation in the brain associated with circadian rhythms 
blinded control group studies have shown that melatonin, 5 or 10 milligrams twice a day, reverses fatty liver disease. Dr. Gland asks Dr. Mason, do you prescribe melatonin? He answers, yes. He says, the best approach is to reduce oxidative stress. You need to stop the fluctuating sugar levels by cutting carbs and cutting liquid fats and oils. These are always oxidized. If you cut these out, you don't need a supplement like melatonin. But for patients who cannot cut out carbs and liquid fats, he says, let's do risk mitigation. Melatonin, like another supplement he recommends, carnosine, is a great supplement to take. Isn't it a sleep promoter? Yes, but in most patients, morning melatonin is fine. Very rarely a patient has a problem, but that is usually caused by their own sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is associated with visceral fat. We used to think it was caused by a fatty neck around the airways, but it is actually the tongue. The tongue gets fat. MRI studies show fat in the tongue before and after weight loss. You can see the airway space clears up with weight loss. When people fall asleep, the muscles around the airways relax. If the tongue is fatty, it occludes or blocks the airway. But people are not always conscious of their waking. This is what happens. The airway occludes. Blood deoxygenates. The brain is aroused in a sympathetic trigger. We better open up the airway. So there's partial awakening. This can happen many, many times an hour. And often the person is not aware of this, but they're never getting deep sleep. Sleep deprivation has a huge impact on hormones leptin and ghrelin, which are essential for energy homeostasis. It leads to a vicious cycle, which is difficult to break. Get overweight, get poor hormone effects. This causes more weight gain. The study that showed that it is the tongue that causes sleep apnea and this vicious cycle concluded perhaps the tongue can be operated on or using cryotherapy burn the tongue to shrink it. Dr. Mason and Dr. Gland both think, why would they recommend that instead of simply losing weight with a healthy diet to reduce the tongue fat and then cut this vicious cycle? 